Today we'll be looking at Alabama Civic Standard 13, identify contemporary American issues since 2001, including the establishment of the United States Department of Homeland Security, the enactment of the Patriot Act 2001, and the impact of media analysis. We begin with the presidency of George W. Bush. He was inaugurated on January 20, 2001 and concluded his term of office on January 20, 2009. He was the 43rd president of the United States. His election was controversial. Al Gore had more popular votes. It came down to the election in one county in Florida Votes were counted over and over again. Finally, the Supreme Court stepped in and essentially made a declaration and that led to George W. Bush becoming president rather than Al Gore. The September 11th attacks on 9-11-2001. Islamic extremists attacked the Pentagon and the World Trade Center in New York. Another plane crashes into a field in Pennsylvania after passengers fight back. This led to the U.S. war in Afghanistan. Now, the war in Afghanistan began in 1978 and it continues today. The United States entered the war against the Taliban faction in 2001 over their failure to hand over Osama bin Laden uh, for trial in the United States. The Afghan war is ongoing and no one really has a, an idea of when it may end. The Soviet Union was involved back in the 80s. Eventually they left. We got involved in 2001 and we're still there. The Department of Homeland Security started on November 25th, 2002. It was established as a cabinet-level agency charged with taking the United States from terrorism, natural disasters, and major accidents. It had actually been proposed before the 2001 terror attacks, but afterward it was implemented as a way of combining all the agencies that would be relevant to preventing an attack on American soil. Lack of communication between agencies, particularly FBI and the CIA, before the attacks was blamed for the attacks succeeding. So the department was intended to help communication between these agencies. The Iraq War began on March 20th, 2003, and United States involvement ended on December 18th, 2011. The United States invaded Iraq over concerns about weapons of mass destruction. We stayed in Iraq. We found Saddam Hussein. He returned him over to the new Iraqi government. He was hung. Eventually, we came to a point with the new government of Iraq that they did not want us in the country, and we left. We could not reach an agreement on keeping our forces in the country. The Human Genome Project was completed on April 14th, 2003. For the first time, the entire human genome was sequenced. We understood the DNA in a human. This is a huge step forward in medicine. We're still working with the research to find cures for diseases, treatments for cancers, ways that our understanding of genetics can be used to further medicine. It's also being used in genealogy. For less than $100 now, you can have your genotype. It's not a full sequencing, but a small sequencing of your DNA done. And you can be connected to other people that you're related to that you've never met before. 
February 4th, 2004, Facebook is launched. Initially, it was only for Harvard students. It was open to the public in 2006. There were other social networks before Facebook, but Facebook grew to be the largest and most influential of the social networks. Earlier social networks like Friendster are seldom heard of today or have simply gone out of business. MySpace was big for a while. Now it's pretty much just bands, I think. And the World of Warcraft was released on November 23rd, 2004. It became the largest massively multiplayer game with around 12 million subscribers at its peak. It's significant, not because it was the first virtual world that people interacted in, it wasn't, there were earlier ones. Ultima Online, um, Second Life, but Warcraft became the most popular and is most enduring today and still has millions of subscribers, even though it's maybe about half of what it was at its peak. This launched a new genre of gaming, but it also allowed people to be connected to each other around the world, to be in the same gaming guild, to be in the same gaming world, regardless of what continent they were on, regardless of their physical location. So Warcraft shows how the world got smaller, because now you may have friends around the country, or maybe even around the world, and you play together in the same game. YouTube was founded February 14th, 2005. It changed the way people consume video media. Moving from traditional television to online streaming and from large studio productions to personal or small company video productions. There are many YouTube channels where one or two people have successfully created a channel made money by doing so using just basic tools available to anyone at Best Buy or on Amazon. This course spelled the uh, death knell for video rental places. Blockbuster was a huge chain before video streaming came along and in just a few years it was destroyed as a major corporation. Hurricane Katrina started on August 23rd, 2005 and was over by the end of that month. A massive hurricane damages New Orleans and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The Department of Homeland Security and the state of Louisiana blame each other for failures in their response to the storm. It was bad enough that a, a massive storm ripped through the Mississippi Gulf Coast in New Orleans. New Orleans suffered further when the levees broke and the floodwaters filled the city, which is slightly below sea level, about six feet below sea level, and filled up like a bowl and had to be pumped out. But the various agencies involved, the federal government, the state of Louisiana's agencies did not work well together, and the president, the governor, blamed each other for their problems. It was a disaster, not just a natural disaster, but a disaster of the failure of government to come together to work in the best interest of the people. Twitter was founded on March 21st, 2006. It became a giant social media company with nearly 288 million monthly users as of 2015. So a little bit later than Facebook and quite different from Facebook. It's called, it's called a microblog, a blog where you're limited to just a certain number, say 140 characters. But Twitter became huge. Celebrities got on it, people used it to communicate for personal reasons for work and so forth. Um, in the education community, uh, when you go to an education conference, there'll be a hashtag. You tweet with that hashtag so you can keep up with what's going on at the conference. You might find out that a, a room has been changed for a meeting or that a conference was canceled through Twitter. North Korea tests a nuclear weapon. October 9th, 2006, the communist country gains access to nuclear weapons despite agreements that we had to uh, limit North Korea from getting nuclear weapons and their promises that they would only use their uh, science for peaceful research. Of course, they developed a weapon. The global financial crisis began on February 27, 2007. It was the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. 
The date reflects the announcement by the Freddie Mac, the Federal Home Loan Corporation, that they would no longer engage in the riskiest loans. It was realized that some of the riskier loans were not going to be paid back. They were going to go into default. This would lead to a crisis of home foreclosures, plummeting home values, people losing their homes, people being financially ruined, and it was a huge economic downturn for the country. The, the word depression was whispered for the first time seriously in a very long time. But we avoided the depression, uh, or a second Great Depression. We did have a recession that was fairly long-lasting, but we never slipped into a depression. The iPhone 1 was released by Apple on June 29th, 2007. This was the beginning of the smartphone revolution where people looked to their phones for more than just communication and a few perhaps basic apps. There were phones with apps before this. The Razer phone had games and things that you could download and play, but it was really nothing like the uh, iPhone 1. The Android phone system came along a bit later. So this is really the birth of the smartphone with the control screen rather than a keyboard like the old Palm Pilots or Blackberries had. And of course, this helped the economy because suddenly people are lining up to buy this new phone. It's a big product. It makes a lot of money for Apple. And then later, the, the same idea makes a lot of money for Samsung and Google and all the various companies that copied from Apple. Barack Obama was elected president in the fall of 2008, the first African-American to be elected president. In fact, the first person wasn't a white male to be elected president. And he was inaugurated on January 20th, 2009. His term of office will end on January 20th, 2017. He will have served his full two terms at that point. He is the 44th president of the United States. On April 3rd, 2010, the iPad was released by Apple. The iPad makes tablet computing popular and commonplace. There were tablet computers around before this. They tended to be chunkier and not as easy to use. Many people thought the iPad would fail. Why do we need an iPad? We have a portable notebook computer. If we need something small, we have an iPhone. Why do we need this in-between device? But of course, it became very popular. You've got one in front of you here at our school. And it really changed the way, again, people use computers. Less and less people have a desktop computer or even a notebook computer. More and more, you have a tablet or a phone or a phablet, which is a large phone, kind of between the size of a tablet and a regular phone. The Arab Spring begins on December 10th, 2010. Populations in several Arab nations overthrow dictatorships in a series of revolts following the map here from Wikipedia shows which countries uh, were affected and changed governments. And of course, in Syria, there's still an ongoing war as of today, October 4th, 2015, that I'm making this presentation. And Russia's gotten involved in that war. The United States is involved in that war. Uh, it seems to be escalating. By the time you actually uh, watch this presentation in several weeks, there may be some things I need to add to it. Osama bin Laden was killed on May 2nd, 2011. Navy SEALs killed bin Laden in a raid in Pakistan. And on November 18th, 2011, Minecraft was released by a small independent gaming studio called Mojang. It became one of the most popular and influential video games in history. Before Minecraft, even your virtual worlds like World of Warcraft were pretty much games on a rail. There were a series of things you were expected to do, quests to run or dungeons to go through or what have you. But your experience was pretty close player to player as you went through and played the game. Minecraft is what's called a sandbox game. 
there's not really a structured experience to it. There's a virtual world, but you might build that world, change it. The experience can be very different and you can even customize your own servers and run your own worlds. Something you can't do with a game like World of Warcraft. So Minecraft changed gaming. Whereas before, you might be playing with people around the world on a server hosted by a, a big corporation, Blizzard Entertainment. With Minecraft, you might be hosting your own server at home with people logging in to play from around the world. In a world that you built, that you created, that you customized. Encyclopedia Britannica ended the print edition on March 13th, 2012. After 244 years of production, the famous Encyclopedia Britannica discontinues the print edition and now exists solely as a website. When I was in third grade, my parents bought a set of the Encyclopedia Britannica. It was very expensive. Today, I pay an annual subscription to get access to all that information and it's much more convenient to access than the paper version. Edward Snowden reveals mass surveillance by the U.S. government on May 20th, 2013. A contractor with the National Security Agency, Snowden fled the country and revealed that U.S. has spied on American citizens and foreign governments. So Snowden released information, released proof of U.S. spying. This did a lot of damage to the United States diplomacy, but it did reveal the extent to which our own government spies on us and on other world leaders. Today, he's still in Russia, um, evading US law enforcement. If the United States could catch him and bring him back, he would be put on trial, quite likely for treason. At the very least, for stealing and exposing national secrets. The Islamic State proclaims a worldwide caliphate. An Islamic extremist group, sometimes known as ISIS or ISIL or the Islamic State, proclaims itself as the authority over all Muslims worldwide. The group is known for beheading journalists and humanitarian aid workers. And they put many of their videos online to recruit other like-minded extremists. From January 7th to January 9th, 2015, we had the Charlie Hebdo attacks in France. Islamic extremists attacked targets in France, including a humor magazine, a political cartoon magazine, named Charlie Hebdo. This was a magazine that put out political cartoons insulting many religions, insulting many governments. A couple of gunmen came in and killed a number of people there, followed by an attack on a Jewish grocery store. They were eventually killed, but they did a lot of damage. On June 27, 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court rules in favor of gay marriage. The Supreme Court of the United States rules that gay marriage is a constitutional right and must therefore be recognized by all states. This is a change in American law. Before that, it had been a state-by-state -state decision on who could get married. But the Supreme Court declared that it was a constitutional right. It was a five-to-four decision. On July 20th, 2015, the U.S. and Cuba resumed full diplomatic relations. This will eventually lead, most likely, to the embargo being lifted on trade and travel with Cuba. Some of the restrictions have been lifted by now. But the United States and Cuba broke diplomatic relations when Cuba became a communist country back in the 1960s. And President Obama reached out to the Cuban government to resume diplomatic relations. <laughs> 